Hello, Mark by Grace. This is Victoria. Hi. It's hey. Emily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, as you see, I have a very special guest with me tonight. Um, tonight, we're going to just be continuing our series of women in the Bible. We have Miss Emily Isabel with us tonight. Um, she's one of the co-founders and vice president of Market by Grace. It is, we're so honored to have her here tonight. Um, and she's going to be sharing about the woman with the issue of blood. Um, before we get started, we're just going to pray in quick, and then she's going to take it away. Father God, thank you, Lord, for each and every person that will be watching this broadcast tonight or watching it later on, God. I just thank you, Lord, for that their hearts will be open and their ears will be open, Lord, to hear what you have for them. And um, Lord, we just pray for Emily Isabel tonight, God, um, that you'll just touch, you know, her mouth, God, that she'll go in forth and speak your word and your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay, let me scooch over here a little bit. All right. Hello, everybody. Um, so, as Victoria said, I'm Emily Isabel, or some of you know me as Isabel. Um, and today, um, I wanted to talk about the woman with the issue of blood. It's a story that I would say everyone knows. It's um, she's talked about fairly often, um, you know, in multiple different. My, I, I mean, I know my dad has talked about her in many, many, many sermons. So I know this story like the back of my hand. But um, you know, of course when you're giving a little word to people, you know, you want to go back into the story and look at the word and meditate on the word and, you know, get some revelation for yourself. So um, I want to start off by reading her story. Um, so we're going to go to, if you have your Bibles on your, you know, tangible Bibles or on your phone, um, go to Mark 5, um, verse 20. We're going to go to... 25. Okay. <clears throat> and this is in the Passion Translation. Uh, so now in the crowd that now in the crowd that day was a woman who had suffered horribly from continual bleeding for 12 years. She had endured a great deal under the care of various doctors, yet in spite of spending all she had on her tr her treatments, she was not getting better but worse. When she had heard about Jesus's healing power, she pushed through the crowd and came up from behind him and touched his prayer shawl. For she kept saying to herself, if only I could touch his clothes, I know I will be healed. As soon as her hand touched him, her bleeding immediately stopped. She knew it, for she could feel her body instantly being healed of her disease. Uh, verse 30. Jesus knew at once that someone had touched him for he felt the power that was always surging around him had passed through him for someone to be healed. He turned and spoke to the crowd saying, who touched my clothes? His disciples answered, what do you mean who touched you? Look at this huge crowd. They're all passing up against you. But Jesus's eyes swept across the crowd looking for the one who had touched him for healing. When the woman who experienced this miracle realized what had happened to her, she came before him trembling with fear and threw herself down at his feet saying, I was the one who touched you. She told him her story of what had just happened. Then Jesus said to her daughter, because you dared to believe your faith has healed you. Go with peace in your heart and be free from your suffering. So with that story, Jesus was actually walking through, um, oh, I forgot where it was, I believe it was Nazareth. But he was walking through this town and people heard that Jesus was coming. And so tons of people came out to Jesus, you know, people that needed healings and, you know, miracles and stuff or just wanting to, to meet him. They were bombarding him. Like they said, it was a giant crowd of people to give you kind of an image. It was literally almost like shoulder to shoulder. Like there was that many people in the crowd. So there's people constantly touching Jesus, um, you know, touching his arm, touching his shoulder, you know, whatever. Um, and he knew that, but the reason that she was so set apart was because he, like he said, he felt power discharge from him. He felt power leave him. Um, and it was because of her faith. And that's what I wanted to talk about today was her faith. You know, he, her healing was definitely a very important part of the story, but she took that, that leap of faith. She took that step out of, in faith. 
um, because she was so desperate for healing. You know, she had been bleeding for 12 years and I looked it up and actually it was a disease that she was actually hemorrhaging from her, uh, it was vaginal hem hemorrhaging. Um, so imagine being a woman um, and have vaginal hemorrhaging for 12 years that no one could help you. You know, you went to doctors upon doctors, gave them all your money, spent every last penny to get healed and they couldn't help you, but they only made you worse. And back in those times, um, people or women, you know, that were that had, you know, vaginal hemorrhaging, they were considered unclean. Um, so she, it says in, um, where is it? When she went up to him and she told him, you know, that I touched you, that she came before him trembling with fear because she knew that, um, because she knew that she was considered unclean. So she knew that touching Jesus was going to make him unclean so that he, you know, back then they had to do rituals, cleansing rituals and things like that. But she was so desperate um, in Luke, in Luke eight, verse 49, it, it says how it changes the way that she said, I was the one who touched you. She actually says, I was so desperate. I was so desperate for healing that I touched you. And being in her position for 12 years, 12 years, like that's nuts. Like to me, I cannot conceptualize that like for 12 years, just constant bleeding and no one can help me. I would be desperate too if I was her, if I heard that Jesus was in town and, you know, he made all these, he did all these wonderful miracles and all these wonderful things to all these different people. I would think, well, if he can do that for other people, why can't he do that for me? I've searched throughout you know, and through all these different other options and nothing has worked it. And if anything, it made me worse. So, you know, just she, this woman is amazing and her story is amazing. And I just had to tell it. Um, and it doesn't really say in the Bible exactly what disease she had. It just said she had a disease. Um, and I believe that this, this, story isn't just about healing, but it's also about our faith, you know, with whatever we need from God, um, you know, whether it's healing or financial help or emotional needs or emotional healing, you know, we need to step out in our faith like the woman with the issue of blood. We need to be so confident in Jesus and in his power. I wrote down her belief trumped her fear. We need to be so confident in our, in Jesus and in his power and you know, in our belief of him, that nothing will stop us from getting, getting to him. He just wants, it's already ours, you know, it's our, it's our right as children of God, you know, um, but we just have to go to him and ask. We just have to go out and touch the robe. And actually she didn't even, she didn't even touch his robe. She touched um, the, um, the trimming on his, on his prayer shawl. It says it in, um, I believe it's either, Matthew, um, Matthew nine or Luke eight in there, it says that she didn't even touch the rope. She touched barely the trimming of his shawl. So it was literally just a skim. It's not even like she fully grabbed his arm or, you know, turned him around or whatever. She literally just barely grazed him. And she said to herself, if I might but touch his prayer shawl, if I might, but just merely with my mere touch, touch him, I will be healed. Um, and she, and one thing, and the reason why Jesus, cause you know, Jesus could have kept walking. He, you know, he couldn't, uh, he knew, he knew what happened. She knew what happened, but he didn't have to acknowledge it, but he acknowledged it. He turned around and said, daughter, because of your faith, you may, you have been healed, you know, and your faith in me because you've been healed. So go in peace and be free from your suffering. So he wanted to acknowledge her in front of the whole entire crowd of what just happened, because what happened was so important, not only to the, not only to the people in the crowd, but to us as Christians reading this story, because, you know, um, because it's just so important to know that it's all about our faith. It's not about our works. It's not about you know, what we did yesterday or today or what we're striving to do or if we fail, it doesn't matter about that. It's all about our faith in God because it's not us, it's him at the end of the day. It's, and God is moved to action by our faith. It's not, so we have to take that step um, in order to, in order for that.
you know, because God's not just going to do things on his own because he gave us free will. You know what I mean? So he's not going to go against our will um, to, to heal us, you know. So she took that step and she took it boldly. She wasn't being meek about it. She wasn't, oh, well, I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's going to happen. If, if I touch him, is it really going to happen? Oh, I don't think I might get healed. You know, it wasn't like that for her. She stepped out boldly. She stepped out boldly in faith to, um, to get her healing. And um, I actually wanted to read this one passage because, you know, when I look up, when I read a story and I look up a story, I like to, um, I like to familiarize myself with it and, you know, see, you know, see what other people got in their revelations of the story. Um, and one great point was brought up was that, you know, it illustrated the difference between Jesus and the law. Um, so as soon as the woman touches Jesus, her bleeding stops and she knows she's been healed. In an instant, Jesus know, Jesus does what no doctor in 12 years had been able to do. This proves the power of Christ, of course, but it also illustrates an important point about Jesus and the law. In Leviticus 15, 31, God says, you must keep the Israelites separate from things that make them unclean, so they will not die in their uncleanliness for defiling my dwelling place, which is among them. In the Old Testament, the temple was where God dwelt among the Israelites. But in the New Testament, God dwelt among men in the person of Jesus Christ. And then it refers to John 1.14. Um, through Jesus, the penalties of the law are reversed, and the contamination of this world had no effect on Christ. The woman did not make Jesus, God's dwelling, unclean. He made her clean. Isn't that just so wonderful to hear that? It's like I said, it's not by our efforts. It's not by what we do or, you know, if we consider ourselves worthy because she, for hearing that for 12 years and knowing what she knew about having this condition that people considered her unclean, that I'm sure there was probably a point in time where she felt like she wasn't worthy, where she felt like she wasn't clean, where she felt like, you know, no one wanted to be around her. She probably was in isolation for a very long time because no one wanted to be around someone that was considered unclean because if you were around that person, you were considered unclean as well. So she went through a period most likely of being alone and by herself and not having anybody. But by the grace of God, you know, Jesus, he doesn't care about that stuff. He, he loves us. He loves us so much, you know, that he wants to heal us and he wants us to be happy and he wants us to be prosperous and, and all that wonderful, wonderful stuff, all these promises that he guaranteed us as a child of God, that's what he wanted for us. And that's what he wanted for her. And by her taking that step out in her faith, you know, it happened for her. And it was, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing to hear it. Um, and it, and that's, uh, it makes me think about, you know, this one, one revelation I got a long time ago and I didn't really know it was something that's so simple but it's like that thing where it's like it's like the light bulb it's like oh wow like that was so in my face but i remember i was talking to i don't remember who i was talking to but um we were talking about how you know in back then in the old testament you know in the in the in the temple there was a separate room that was um covered by a veil it was a thin veil but the only people allowed back there were um, the, the prophets. It wasn't any of the people, the normal people, quote unquote, um, they weren't allowed back there. And there was a separation. It felt like between God and his people because of this veil. But when Jesus died on the cross, I heard in a song, it said the veil was torn in two. And I never really understood what that meant. And then I finally got the revelation that it means that that veil back in the old Testament that separated God in that sacred holy place and his people was torn in two so that people, so that we could have access to him and to um, his power and to that secret place that we can seek out in any, any place, any time that we want. That's what that meant when Jesus died for us, that we could have that access, that we could have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with Christ. 
and it's something that's just so special to me um, because, it, you know, I, I love my relationship with God. He is the person that I talk to the most, um, you know, whether I'm uttering under my breath or I have my one-on-one -on -one time with God, he is the one that knows everything about me. Even if I'm not talking to him about stuff, he, he knows everything, but I wouldn't be able to have that access if Jesus did not do what he did for us. And the woman with the issue of blood wouldn't have been able to just boldly reach out um, like that. Um, but, you know, so she, this story is something that I constantly think about and it's constantly talked about. And there's just so much revelation that we can get from it. Um, and it's not just, it's not, it's not just one level. It's, there's so many deeper levels to it, more than I probably even got revelation of that if you just spend more time in it, that you can get you know, the depths of it about her faith and about her healing and how, you know, it's not just limited to her. It's for all of us. The story applies to all of us. We just need to reach out and take that step, that leap of faith. And I know that it can be scary sometimes, you know, when you've been alone and in isolation so long and you feel like, um, you feel like there's no one there for you. You feel like there's no one around, but we, like that woman with the issue of blood did, you just need to take that step and it's okay to be nervous. It's okay to be, a, I wouldn't say scared, but it's, you know, God wants us to come as we are and he wants to love on us and, and shower us with his loving kindness and affection and grace and mercy. But it's up to us. We can't, we can't just be closed off and expect God to come to us because he's not going to overpower our free will. Um, so it's, it's up to, like I said, it's up to us. It's our decision. Um, but he's there. He's waiting for us with open arms. And he just, he just wants to love you. And it's something that for a while I found it hard to grasp. But in my time, in my prayer with God, I realized that it's, he just loves me and he wants to be there for me. And he's as real as Victoria is or my dad is or you know all my family and um but, but yeah he's just he's amazing he wants to love you um and i just wanted to actually close out with with this i wanted to pray um and just you know if you've never accepted christ in your life or um known like you've always been a believer but you never really had that like close, close relationship with God. And you've always desired that, um, you know, let's pray now, right now for that. So Father God, we thank you for everyone that is under the sound of my voice right now, Father God. And Lord, I know that, you know, they've been believers or they're not believers, but they want to get to know you, Father God. Lord, come into their heart and just embrace them, Lord. Embrace them with your love, Father God, and just make yourself known to them. Make yourself known to them and Lord, just remove themselves out of their own way, Father God, that, you know, they can get out of their own way so that they can come closer to you, Father God, that they, they know they want to get to know you, but they just been in isolation too long. They don't want to, they don't, they're just too scared. They're scared of, you know, the possibilities of things that could happen, you know, thoughts that have that people and words that people have tried to speak over them, Father God, things that are not true, Father God, that have gotten into them and, you know, they just can't get it out of their mind. Lord, come into their mind and remove those thoughts and replace it with their thoughts, Father God. And Father God, just encourage them to step out in their faith to get to know you. Lord, that you have just have so much to offer them and so much peace to give them and so much healing and love and in all areas of their life, prosperity, Father God, that that you just come into their heart and you make yourself known so that they can get themselves out of the way, Father God, that, that they can get to know you and the love that you have for them. And in all these things we pray, amen. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for having me.
Um, I'm going to hand the reins back over to Victoria. Um, <laughs> you do so great. This is my niece, in case you guys didn't know. But she did such a great job. Isabel, well, thank you for speaking. You're She's welcome. a very busy college student, so please keep her in her prayers. She's in a five-week intensive science class, so please keep her in her prayers. Uh, just a reminder, Saturday is our brunch. We're back in person. Um, the details are on our page where it is. It's at 10 a.m. We're also going to be live streaming the message for those that can't make it in person, aren't, aren't comfortable coming in person yet. That'll go live at 11.15. So again, 10 a.m., Eastern Standard Time, up in Catskills, New York. We're going to be meeting for brunch. Details are on our page. Thank you all for joining us. We love you, and we will see you soon. Bye.